Hey, so with this one, we're going to look at the JIT Rota object, which is definitely one of the most, like, um, fun objects, I think, or just rewarding. Like, it, it's very immediate in what it can do and how you can play with it. Um, I think a lot of you will find applications for it. Um, the Rota stands for uh, Rotate. And it just gives you a bunch of different like tools for like moving an image, zooming an image, uh, rotating an image, um, and we'll see how we can play around with that. Uh, so I'm just going to do the same thing I usually do, jit grab, I'm going to send it a message, open, make a Q metro, get a toggle, should be pretty intuitive by this point, um, this whole structure right here. And then I'll make a jit.p window. And here I am, it's Monday morning. Uh, yep. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find some different messages we can send to JitRota in order to do some interesting things. Um, right away, we could start with zoom x is one. I'll do a dollar sign one, and that means we'll give it a value that'll go there, and then I can copy that, and I can do zoom y, and notice the underscore. Uh, they each expect a float. I believe it's a 1 is 100%, percent point nine is 90%, percent. Uh, 1.1 1 .1 is 110%, percent. you get the idea. Uh, and I'll type 1 in just so we have a basis there. And if I start sliding around, you can see I'm starting to zoom in on the, uh, the object. Or sorry, not the object, on the image. Um, I can keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, and then I can also do that to the Y. And if I send the same value to both of them, then I get this. And it, it should be, um, you might be wondering why it's zooming from here because that's what's happening you can see that it's like even when I stretch like with a zoom effect you would think it would be kind of in the middle right here um, and that's just something that we have to set too uh, there's another uh, argument called anchor And this, we're going to need an integer for this one. This one we actually have to do a little bit of math to figure out how to anchor the image. Um, because we, it's not going to be a float. Uh, if we want to anchor the image, the anchor is basically the pivot point of where we're doing all these rotational and scaling uh, things from. So if right now the pivot point is zero, zero, it means it's going to scale and rotate and move everything from this upper left corner. But we want it to happen right in the center for the meantime. Um, and in order to do that, we actually have to give it the pixel value of the exact center of the image. And we can figure that out just from using that JIT FPS GUI object. And I can hook it up to the JIT grab here. And uh, if I grab, if I grab this little drop-down menu while it's locked, I can say dim. And we have 1280 by 720. So uh, divided by two, that's 690 by um, 360. So I can go 690, 360. Oh, I think I got the message wrong. Oh, no, no, I just didn't put the dollar sign one in. Ah. 
Let's try that again. 690, 360. And now we've got a nice little centered scaling object. Um, one thing you probably noticed is as I scaled down and scaled down and scaled down, I have this kind of like trail effect right here. Um, and that can, it, it's, it's supposed to do that. What's happening is like, uh, it doesn't know that it needs to clear all this information. Uh, it's just going to report the last pixel that was represented there until it receives the value of a new pixel. Uh, and it can be pretty cool. It's kind of a nice, especially with this like centered zoom effect. You, if I, if I were to do it a little bit more slowly, you get this kind of like, uh, tunnel vision kind of like effect going on. Um, and there's a couple of ways you can get rid of that if you want. You can also, one really simple way is that you can just send the message clear to JitRota. Although you'd have to continue sending the message clear to it. And you could do that just by hooking up the bang object here. So every frame that comes in, you're also sending the message clear. Uh, and the other way you can do that though, is with something called bound mode. And that's just specific to the JitRota object. And it's basically there's a couple of different modes. It expects an integer. Um, and you're basically telling it how you want it to wrap the image. And zero is saying um, don't wrap and don't erase. One is saying don't wrap and do erase. I'll show you really quickly what I mean here. So right now in bound mode zero, the pixels all stay there. If I change it to one, it'll just it'll change the behavior now, basically to that clear message where it's like, oh, anytime the original image is moved or scaled away from a position outside the bounding box of uh, our image, we'll just represent that as black. Uh, if I keep going up, I go two. Two is actually where it just repeats the image. And you can see if I zoom in, and you get this whole grid of the same image happening right here. And then three, three, <laughs> three is kind of funny. Um, it's going to clamp. That's kind of a, uh, what it's doing, you know, like it clamps the image. It's grabbing the last pixel before it gets to the bounding area. And it's just repeating that for infinity, infinity. Um, so you can see kind of like my shirt just extends down this bike, the pedals go off and whatnot. So uh, as an effect, it's a little interesting, but it's also, yeah, it's very specific in its look. And then four is you mirror the image. Um, and yeah, there's, that's kind of, it's, that's not, there's one last, there's two other things we can do. I mentioned we can rotate, so there's theta. Theta expects a float. And you might think that it would be 0 to 360, but it actually is represented um, as a values of pi. So theta full rotation would be 2 pi, half rotation would be pi, and quarter rotation is pi divided by 2. Now, I don't need to be completely exact with this, um, I could just do 6.28. And nothing happens um, because that's just a full rotation. So then if I go to 3.14, and 
and we rotated the image 180 degrees. Um, let's see, 3.14, I think that's really, we can just grab it too. And you can see that I'm rotating the image. I still have that mirror effect on, so it's just gonna mirror the image anywhere it comes around like that. And I can zoom in. Uh, I could change the bound mode. I can change the anchor point. And with that one, with the anchor point, now it's rotating the image from this zero, zero corner again. That's just that pivot point I was talking about. Um, and then the last one, is offset. And this is just going to offset the image, slide it around. Um, so I'll get my theta back to zero. And so if I offset the X by 690, it'll cut the image in half. You can see that right there. Um, we also offset it by 360, and we get this kind of corner right here in the bound. It can make a little mirrored image thing there. Maybe if I did negative 360 and negative 690, and you get this kind of this 360. Yeah, that's right. And you get that quick time filter that everybody loves so much. I personally hate mirrored images. I'll talk about that more in class. But you can play with it if you want. I just think it's just the absence of a choice. Um, and yeah, like if you expose all these different parameters, now you can really like play with the movement of an image. You can play with the scaling of an image. And one thing we haven't uh, we started to talk about, like I've, I've shown you like random, we can get random values and we can even get drunk values, but sometimes I want like smoother values and like how I move things around. So I'm going to show you how to we can use like an audio signal to actually move any of these parameters. So the first thing I'm going to make is a easy DAC object with that tilde at the end there. And when I hit enter, I get this little thing right here. Let me just type that out for you. Um, and this is basically how we turn audio on and off in Max. This is part of MSP. That tilde means it's part of MSP. MSP is everything audio related in Max. And if I just click on that, uh, you can see the icon turns on. And that just means that audio data would be like flowing in Max. Uh, so I can make a cycle, which is basically a sine wave. And I can give it a frequency value. I'll do like a really low one, like 0.2. Uh, and I don't even have to turn this on. It's basically being turned on and off through this. And I'm going to make a number uh, thing right here with the tilde. It's going to turn into what looks like an integer box, but it's not. Um, if I hook that up here, you can see like a sine wave, it's just oscillating between negative 1 and 1. Uh, but we also have this yellow patch cord here. And much like jitter objects have this green patch cord, which is saying that matrix data is coming out of it, yellow patch cord is saying that MSP data is coming out of it, uh, which is not the same. This is just a numerical representation of that signal. It's not actually a float. So I can't hook it up to a normal float box like that. Uh, what I can do, though, is I can make an object called snapshot, and I can convert those values to numbers. 
And Snapshot works a little bit like our uh, Q Metro, we, where every time it gets a bang, it'll output its number. And we're not seeing anything now, but if I make a bang, we're seeing the current value. So I'll just do the same thing. I'll do Metro 33. Now we got these this value rising and climbing and going back and forth, uh, and I could just hook that up to my zoom effect. And uh, it's a little choppy. I think my computer is running out of space from recording all this stuff, so I'll have to clean that up in just a second. Um, you can see it's moving there, and I can send a new frequency, like 0 0.0. Two. And now it's a lot smoother. If I just did like three, it's just going to go like haywire. Hey, your frames can't even keep up with that. Um, and as long as we know that that value is always negative one to one, um, we can also scale it. So I can say scale negative one to one. This is the same thing as the map function in P5. And Let's say I want to make it uh, what the range of the x dimension is. So I can do 0 to 1280. I'll unhook this one for a second. Now we have the image going back and forth and back and forth. And again, changing the bound mode. We can do it so the image is repeating. We can do it where it just disappears. It's almost like sliding in and out. We can do it where, let's see if I, can I make a slit scan effect like that? It's just repeating the last frame there at the edge. So, yeah, uh, this is just like a way to play with the representation of scaling an image, moving an image, zooming an image, rotating an image, and also just a quick introduction to like how we can use audio signals to create movement with a lot of these effects. Um, I'll go over this in a little more detail uh, in some of the class stuff, but uh, just like, you know, a cycle is a sine wave. You could also do a, a phaser, which is a sawtooth wave. Um, and just using a snapshot object to turn it into a value that we can hook up to our parameters, uh, we can create all sorts of like complex movement. So.